Doodle Bud here. This pen just came in today. It is the Mahjong P136. It just came in. All I've done so far is open it to make sure the pen was in there and I got the right color. But other than that, I thought I would share my initial excitement with you. And then I'll do a full-fledged review with this as well. So I ordered the green. I think this looks pretty sharp. Let's see how it holds up. I'll check out the manual here in a minute just to see uh, how that's looking. But let's get right to the pen. Uh, I ordered this one because I saw the pictures online on AliExpress and I thought that build quality actually looks pretty decent. The price was a little higher than normal. So this was, I think, 48 bucks Canadian, depending on exchange rate where you buy it from. Let's just say 45 to $50 Canadian for this pen. So a little higher than their regular pens, but I've been so pleased with my A1s. I got two of them. I had to tr give this one a try. Overall, feels nice in the hand. I can feel a higher quality plastic they got going on. How many rotations we got? One. One rotation. Oh, I'm liking that. Obviously, this looks a lot like a Mont Blanc 146, but uh, yeah, so far I like that. We got some nice brand in here on the cap band. That's, yeah, no burrs. That's actually a really nice looking job. You know, standard looking type of clip, but uh, yeah, those threads, those threads are quite nice. Comes out nice and smooth. All right, let's, yep, that feels pretty decent in the hand. The threads are really good. I'm liking this so far. Let's put that on and see. Wait a, no, no. What? You're kidding me. You can't post it? Oh, man. What's up with that? I'll come back to that, but that, that's shocking. You know, I have a large hand. Um, so I end up posting a lot of my pens. If it's a really large pen, like the Mont Blanc 149, I don't need to post it. But a pen like this, you know, on its own, it's, it's probably okay for a lot of folks. But, like, the, the 146 posts, like, all pens this shape post. What, what's going on? <laughs> okay, let's see what else. I'm back. I had to take a minute there just to, to check that. That is, it's really weird. But anyways, this is a piston filler. So we got a nice little piston knob. Oh, that's quite smooth. Yeah, we got brass parts. Can we see the piston going up and down the ink window there? Oh, come on. Work with me tonight, focus. So it, it definitely doesn't post. That's still a little uh, <laughs> shocking. Makes my eye twitch. But let's let's continue on. Let's see what else we got going on. So this is a piston filler. Let's check out that piston. Oh, that's really nice. Yeah, I, that's brass parts by the looks of it. The piston motion is really nice. You can see the ink window, so that's working out quite well. The threads on here, can we count how many starts we got? I think we got one, two, looks like a four start thread, so that's quite nice, just like on the regular Mont Blanc pens. Here is your nib, got some nice little, uh, Kind of scroll work on there, you know, classic type of look to it as well. This is a fine point nib. Now to get these out, there is a tool. So to, to fully disassemble the pen, the nib, and the piston filler, they just like on Mont Blanc, you need a special tool. So you can see on here, if, yeah, there we go there. So you need to have a special wrench. They want $20 for the wrench. I found that quite odd. That's kind of expensive. It looks fancy how they did the wrench. But for what you need to do, you could just have a piece of stamp sheet metal and, and a couple uh, pins you put on it or something like that. Or even just they just get folded over in some spots. So it is weird. They went all out on an expensive wrench. And for $20, I just feel it's a little bit ridiculous uh, what you're getting for that wrench. So I don't have one. I know probably some other folks have ordered one or whatever. But uh, the feed here, that looks a little interesting. Let me feel this here. Oh, the focus is not going to work with me tonight. Here we go. Yeah, that's strange. Those are quite, uh, check out these fins. Those are super flexible. It's kind of like uh, the underneath of a mushroom. Interesting. Okay, I haven't seen a feed like that before. Okay, let's see how it works. We'll ink it up. That's neither good or bad so far, but it's just, it is what it is. You know, feed design, it's really sort of going along the lines with the, uh, with the Mont Blanc feed design. Um, and the nib here too, you could see you got to use that tool to get it out. I might be able to actually just get a paper clip on here and do this potentially. We'll see. Um, you could probably just friction. Let's see. Can I pop it out? Yeah. Okay. You can pop it out. No problem. So that comes out fairly easy if you don't have the tool. 
there's a look at the feed. I don't see anything terrible there. That looks pretty good. Okay. But uh, yeah, just really different fins. Usually they're a lot chonkier, a little more stable. These are uh, a lot more flexible and stuff as well. And then here's the nib, very much like a Mont Blanc style, how they have the cutouts on there. Um, now, why you're doing that, my guess would be ultimately if you do this in a gold nib, not that this one is, but maybe potentially, that could be coming, that would, removing that material would save you costs. So that would just drive the cost down a little bit more. This is uh, a pretty tight price point to make something like this at. So every little cost saving measure goes a little bit further. So I don't think it's a big deal in steel, but if you're gonna release this in gold, I could I could buy that. But uh, it again, that's neither good nor bad. Um, that's just part of the design. So, and it does have a little, a little bit of a raised portion there as well. That probably going to give a little bit of a, or if that's a little bit of a, help the pressure fit a little bit of a spring fit to it as well. We'll pop that back in there and uh, check out some other things. I'm curious what this pen weighs. So we'll get it on the scale. Full pen uninked, 25.8, let's call it. Just the pen body, the cap's like 10.3. Uh, just the pen body, because you can't write with a post-it. What is up with that? 15 and a half grams. I'm gonna ink the pen up very shortly, but just a couple little things. I'm kind of going over the fine tooth comb. So here you got the pen body and you have that band there. So you can see along, follow my fingernail. It's a step down to the band. You turn it 180, it's a step up to the band. So uh, yeah, just things aren't quite lined up properly, symmetrical. But uh, that's a little small little nit nitpick, but it's one nonetheless. Close up of the cap. The clip is, is well made, fairly tight. I, you know, it's not going to go anywhere, but it might not slip over a shirt pocket or something super easy. But it is uh, definitely it will be secure. The assembly on that looks pretty decent. They can see the cap band here. I'm pretty happy with that. I think the impression is, is pretty nice. We've got some nice writing on there. That's done well. Yeah, the material itself, like this feels quite... Nice. It feels fairly premium when you're holding it in the hand as well. Um, you know, I can tell the difference between a higher end material, but this is really, really close to that. So, uh, yeah, in the hand, the cap, the pen, everything else feels really, really good. Yeah, so far, pretty pleased. Let's uh, let's ink it up and check out this nib, see how it writes out of the box, and then uh, we'll take some closer looks and all that kind of good stuff. I'm gonna test this here for a, for a few days and then uh, wrap up the video after I've been using it for a bit to give you some of those thoughts if anything else has crept up. But let's put some ink, try an initial writing test. Then I'm gonna be breaking out the microscope, looking up close, and then uh, try this out for a week here and finish up the review. And you know me, I'm never one to miss the opportunity to do a measurement. So let's just clear that and ink it up. I'm using Sherwood Green ink and let's see how much ink this holds all right your standard thing with the piston filler if we can get it in here is you just let out a few drops of ink like that and uh there we go let's wipe it off and see how much ink we're holding moment of truth yeah just over a milliliter i'm gonna ink it one more time and just see so inked it one more time just to make sure i fully max it out Okay, we got a little bit more. Let's, so let's just say 1.4 milliliters of ink then. So we're weighing it. We might as well measure it and give you the dimensions on that as well. I'm a little unorganized today, but um, so we have 164.5 millimeters. As you see it like this with the cap on, pop that off. You're left with 125. Uh, you could post it, but the cap would fall off. But if it would stay on, it's 161 millimeters. As far as diameter goes, uh, the main part, the widest part of the cap here measures in about 14 and a half. The body, about 12.9. The section, if we could focus, there we go. We got about a, a 16 millimeters on the smooth part. These threads don't bother you really whatsoever, but the smooth portion is 16 millimeters, tiny taper. It goes from 11.3 down to 10.9. Just for reference, I have it set up with a few other pens. So this is a Montegrappa Elmo Pelican M805 Pilot 912. Here we got the Mahjong P136. Pilot Custom A23 Lamy 2000, and oh, what's this? It's a new pen. It's been a few days since I started the review to come back to finish it. This is a Pilot Vanishing Point, a real one. The caps have come off. We have the same pens there in the same order. So you can see it's just a little bit shorter, pretty close to say a Lamy 2000, a touch longer when the cap is off. And uh, this was easy to do. You just click the button and 
and there you go. I'm not going to bother posting it to show you because it's not going to work anyways. So let's just take it for a burn. And yes, I know everyone watching at home, I should have washed the pen out with some water and soap or pen wash first and flushed it before I inked. Yes, I know that, but I didn't feel like it. So here we go. Oh, oh that's quite nice. Yeah, that's <laughs> surprisingly good. Holy cow, that's a really nice writer. So this is a fine and uh, super smooth. Yeah, that's a really good writing pen just out of the box like that. Holy cow. I think I matched the ink. Not too bad. I don't usually try to do that. Let me play around some more. So yeah, that was really, really, really good. Inked it up and it just threw down ink, no problem. Alignment, I don't feel any unreasonable scratchiness. The feedback is perfect. Like it's it's quite, quite smooth, but just, you know, appropriate feedback. Um, yeah, tuning is bang on. The flow is good. Yeah, it's very comfortable to write with. This is just, you know, how you want any pen to be. You just put ink in it. And it writes the way you expect it to, and it does a very good job, and it's smooth. So that's a big time win there. Wow, that it, it, yeah. You can feel the premium. You know, I've been talking about this before. I mentioned this on uh, what was it, the Jinhao X159. Here it is here, and uh, I, as I mentioned before, I just thought it was a missed opportunity. Maybe this is the first rendition. I would love to see an update where they execute it like this, you know, uh, a few extra dollars. I know maybe it's not a few, we're talking like 50 versus, you know, eight or 10, but wow, the material feel, the fit and finish, everything, the assembly, you can notice it r immediately with the pen. And, and uh, yeah, this is really well made. I would love to see something like this with this build quality and these types of materials. Looking down the cap here, we can see uh, we got some brass construction there with the screw. Now again, those little fins very, very similar to what you have on a Mont Blanc 146. So yes, we're not uh, we're not playing around with who this is supposed to look like. It is, again, it is what it is. If they did that with the A1, <laughs> clearly a vanishing point replica, don't be surprised again. But at least if you are See, this is what's going to happen. If you're going to copy a pen design, make your pen look very, very similar to a other, you know, existing, very well-known brand pen, of course you're going to compare. So when they did this, of course, everyone's going to compare it to a vanishing point. But you know what? They did a good job. It wasn't, you know, a terrible execution. It was very surprisingly good. So same with this. You're going to compare this to a Mont Blanc 146 because it looks so much like one. But if you're going to do that, you at least deliver a quality pen. And so far, really good. Ex except for this one thing. This, this blows my mind. I do not understand that. Like, why? I don't know. It's a slight little change in profile that you got to do. To make a post and the whether it's the Mont Blanc 146 or pretty much all pens with this shape post i don't understand why that was missed but uh so far i think that's gonna be my only nitpick but i'm let's get out the microscope give you a closer look at some of their details i'll comb through this more and we'll uh take it from there i got my and star microscope out to take a look at the tipping they did a phenomenal job everything is perfectly aligned out of the box very smooth and consistent polish on that nib let's go through the rest of it stamping's on point there the slit is really uniform everything's looking good you can see a little hair on the section there but the plastic is uh it's looking quite nice let's look at those threads really good job on that thread profile on the injection molding let's have a look at the ink window yeah really nice detail and feature there let's explore the uh the rest of the pen body just so you can see up close i'm just sort of, sort of curious more than anything and then uh i spotted this and thought what it what is that so i found it or originated kind of near the bottom where the ink window is went along but i don't think it's a crack i think it's a little defect in the injection molding there's no actual crack 
in the uh, in the pen bodies. But that's a little bit inter interesting. Now I did again. This is totally unfair. I don't do this other with other pens, but I got the new tool. Little defect in the plating. You can't see that with the naked eye, but I could see this and feel it. So you can see uh, just the alignment of the parts. Things just aren't quite totally concentric. You have a little step on one side, and then as you rotate the pen, it's off a little bit on the other side. But uh, yeah, the band there is pretty good. The Moon Man logo, everything is looking really nice. That fits into the body quite nice. There's no defects there, and you got the P136. But yeah, this is really, really well made. So I've been using this pen for uh, three, four days now. I gotta tell you, I really, really enjoy it. I like the feel, the nib is super smooth. It dried out on me once. I opened it one time and it uh, hard started a little bit, but then it fired up and it was been flawless since. So I, I don't know what that was about, maybe just cause I just used it and I should have washed it up beforehand, but I'll give it a pass on that one. What are the things I like about the pen? It looks great. I love the color, all that sort of stuff. Yes, I know where they're getting the design idea from. We all do. I wish it was, you know, a little more unique, but whatever it is, what it is, but they did a great job on what it is. The little things I found, like I said, uh, this alignment, I don't know, just the assembly jig that they have going on for that. Maybe that should get looked at. Um, there was a tiny flaw in the barrel. You cannot see this unless you go under a microscope or light this up with pretty significant lighting. So it's essentially invisible, but me being me, I look at things up close. So I think that's, uh, you know, a bit of a one-off thing, maybe just something happened a little bit there with the injection molding process. You can get little flaws like that. Let me know in the, the comments if you have one of these and now you know what to look for, if it's if it's uh, persistent in lots of pens and people just don't notice them or if it's just, you know, here and there type thing. My biggest gripe, as you could uh, derive from my video, was just the non-posting thing. I, I am a little bit weirded out by that. I don't know why they chose not to make it post well, but I just feel posting it just you know widens the pen usage as far as fitting more people what i mean by that is just like all of these pens here well except for this one's got no cap but these all post and they all post really well just because depending on your preference you might love the lamy 2000 with that size it's just perfect or you might go that's just so much better it feels more comfortable in the hand the balance might be better for you as well and you can have some like this i'm always impressed by these gravitas pens how deep they post so again, it's perfectly fine like this. Look how deep that posts, but it's just a little bit more and it's still, it just, for me, sits much better. Some pens I don't need to post, but again, um, it's just nice to have that option. One observation, so one thing, so here we got the proper Pilot 823. This is the Wingsung 699. Is I, the posting on this one too, it posts, but again, it's just not, it's a little wiggly. Like you put it on there and you can see it's got that wiggle. So I don't know what's what's up with the, the posting on some of these just being off just, just enough to notice um, versus on here. It's just, it's shunk. It's just, there's no wiggle. It's just on there a little bit better. So yeah, posting is one thing. You know, even where's my little, here it is here, my Faber-Castell Emotion, Stealth Black. You know, it's a little short for me. Boom. Now it's just perfect. So that... Again, I've talked about it for probably half of this review. Wish they just posted it. That's all I got to say for the Mahjong P136. If you stuck it out to the end this long, uh, my thoughts, like I said, very good pen for this price point. I, you know, this is a lot to offer. Piston filler, all those great things. Lovely nib, good performance. And, you know, can this roll with the big boys with these other premium pens over here? It, it sure feels like it in the hand. It performs like it when you're writing with it like one little nitpick I found, but there you can find flaws in any pens. And like I said, the only thing was the posting. So well done on this one. What's the overall verdict on the Mahjong P136? It is truly a lovely pen. So that's all I got for now. Like I said, I got some more reviews coming up like on this guy over there. But until then, we'll just have to catch you next time.